Hello there, Romans here and welcome to another music review. I review every album from a viewpoint of a musician, as I'm a singer, songwriter and a bass player for my own group Jakobay. And in April we have released our debut album called Persage in Life. What makes the album unique is that it's a pretty heavy prog rock without guitars. Instead you have drums, bass, saxophone and keyboards. You can check out our first single, We're Building Our Monument, on my YouTube channel. And in the description of that video you will find all the information about where is the record available like Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, iTunes, Amazon. But it's available also in this digging pack version of a CD uh, with a very beautifully illustrated 20 pages long booklet. So in case you like buying CDs because of the booklets you will like this one. And today I'm going to review the new album from Crippled Black Phoenix called Great Escape. Music review. Music review. Uh, Crippled Black Phoenix is one of the most favorite groups of my girlfriend, and it's been a while since she's been telling me to kind of get to their music and listen to them. And somehow I was avoiding them, not necessarily because I didn't want to listen to their music, but because I simply had so much other stuff to listen to. And when I discovered that uh, last Friday they released a new album, or they were going to release a new album, I was like, okay, let's take this latest effort as a sort of a starting point for me, and let's see how much I'll enjoy their music. So as of now I've heard the new album six times, and let's dive right into the review. The album opens up with a sort of an intro called You Brought It Upon Yourself, which has very soundtrack-ish and Pink Floyd-ish vibes. Um, for me it's a bit too long because uh, with all that speaking and talking, in this intro was something that I... I think it's enough. There was just too much talking, which I think makes sense if you really sit down and listen to the record from start to finish and try to get the story and everything, but you know, if you really like listen to the music, for example, when you go to work or whatever, um, in this intro was something that I simply skipped most of the time because of all that talking. The next song is called To You I Give, which is also one of the uh, singles from the album. I remember when I was listening to this single with my girlfriend, uh, immediately when the song started, she was like, yeah, there is a song where it kind of starts in a similar way and we found out that it's a song called No Part One from White Noise Generator. This is a kind of doomy post-rock track. It's a really great song. I love that heavy but at the same time, very catchy and melodic chorus. No need to cry. It's a really nice melody. And there's a pretty big emotional climax towards the end of the song. My girlfriend saw the uh, band live, I think two or three years ago, and she said that apart from being really blown away by the concert, she said that it was just a huge emotional ride. The whole concert was just filled with emotions. I think there are many bands that uh, have emotions in their music, but if if it's really about melancholy, sadness, maybe sorrow or depression, I think it, this music tends to be labeled more emotional as music that may be happier or brighter. And this song pretty much shows that emotional spectrum that the band covers. Then we have a sort of an interlude called Uncivil War Part 1. Uh, which also has that soundtrack-like quality and it's a very nice track. Mad Men was a song that took me a little bit by surprise. Of course, I haven't really listened to Crippled Black Phoenix before, so I didn't know what to expect. But this is a song that reminds me a little bit of Depeche Mode. I really like those electronic sounds and I think that they used the envelope filter on... I'm not sure if it's if it was on bass or keyboards, but I think it's a bass. Those, do, 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 those sounds are really great, I love them. And this song doesn't really seem to have a chorus, but it's a pretty cool track. Times They Are a Raging is an almost 12 minutes long song. And um, I really love that piano at the beginning that really evokes that feeling of emptiness. It's a very emotional track and I guess it must be really very powerful live, or it will be. And uh, at around five minutes, the song starts getting heavier, covering a different spectrum of emotions like fear or tension. Then it gets back to that melancholic emptiness. But there's one moment which I wouldn't necessarily say I didn't like, but at around nine minutes and 40 seconds, 
you got that guitar play that will immediately remind you of the song Unforgiven from Metallica. Do 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 and then you would go like do 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 and once you realize that this kind of feeling will never go away so maybe bands should be a little more careful about reminding you of some of the most famous and strongest moments in music because then you know um, it's kind of difficult to get rid of that rain black rain heavy is a song where you hear female vocals for the first time and this is a song that really reminded me a lot of Lana Del Rey there's one more song like that called Nebulas a rain black rain heavy uh, has harmonica in the background giving it a subtle country feeling and there are also trumpets that give it like an army vibe you know like when you watch those movies about soldiers and you know, uh, you have those soundtracks, trumpets seem to be one of the instruments used in these soundtracks. In the second half the song transforms into a heavier post-rock kind of track. And this is what I realized with Crippled Black Phoenix, uh, based on what my girlfriend told me, because she was always like, if you love Pink Floyd, I think you will enjoy this group a lot. And I always assumed, even with band being pretty popular, for example, on prog archives, I thought that this is a prog rock group. But I would say that, especially for this record, I'm not sure about what the record sounded like before, but this record really goes in that post-rock style a lot more. And prog rock is one of the elements here, but it's mainly post-rock, really. And the other song I was talking about, Nebulas, is sort of like a combination of post-rock and pop-rock, but it's a brighter song than the rest of the record. The next track is called Slow Motion Breakdown, which is an instrumental track. And I really love the beginning of the song, or the first half of the song, that with those electronic sounds it reminds me a lot of the Stranger Things soundtrack. And then in the middle, song kind of transforms into that heavier post-rock and it kind of loses certain mystery for me, so I kind of wished the song remained same as in the first half. Las Diabolicas is a song that I would rank as a psychedelic rock song and there are some electronic effects on vocals and when we were listening to the record with Julie she told me that this is something she haven't heard from the band before those vocals reminded me a little bit of the Maybe band I heard that I don't remember. and those vocals reminded me a little bit of the band Ghost and then we have uh, sort of like a title track which is divided into two parts we have Great Escape part one I really like that Gregorian choir at the beginning which is very cool and very atmospheric. It's a very slow and very melancholic song and when the female vocals enter it kind of reminded me of Anathema which in terms of feelings is very similar I think to this record. Then the trumpets really support the mood the song tries to create and it's, it's generally a very nice and very chilling song and then when A Great Escape Part 2 starts with, which is over 30 minutes long it has that very uh, Pink Floydish vocals. This song seems to be like a prog rock slash space prog kind of track. It's got some bluesy solos and after like four and a half minutes you get those melancholic strings that in a way connect part one with part two. Then there's another like a Metallica easter egg here because uh, you've got a pretty long guitar solo and at around exactly at eight minutes and 54 seconds You've got that phrase that is exactly like the beginning of the guitar solo in Nothing Else Matters from Metallica. And then you would go in your head like... Of course it doesn't go like that on the record, but I'm not sure if Crippled Black Phoenix were listening to the Black Album from Metallica a lot when making this record. Of course these are just tiny moments that don't even make like 1% of the record, but I just couldn't help myself but notice that and I think you will too. But honestly this is where I was kind of losing my focus a little bit. I think that this song may be a little too long. If you watch my reviews you know that I'm personally a bigger fan of records that are shorter because this album is 1 hour and 13 minutes long which is in my opinion just way too long. This record would benefit if the playlist was a little shorter. That's Of course that's just my subjective preference. There are a lot of people who enjoy long records but I think it would work better with a shorter playtime. Also this is a, a album that 
grew on me with repeated listenings and at first when I heard this album for the first couple of times the length of the record plus the sameness of the songs was kind of uh, not that attractive but I think you have to listen to that record a little more in order to find all the differences between the songs and the songs are relatively various but it will not really seem like that upon the first couple of listenings. There was one more song that I was kind of surprised with. There's a song called Hunok Chataya, which is a Hungarian cover. They shared a song on YouTube and I think that this is probably a bonus track on a two CD version. And I was kind of surprised because when I heard this song, Julie told me that it doesn't really sound like Crippled Black Phoenix. And I was su surprised, like, why are they singing in Hungarian? Because Hunok Chataya means something like the battalion of Hun. And uh, I think it was interesting, but it was kind of uh, unexpected. My girlfriend Julie is a big fan of Crippled Black Phoenix and she has heard their previous records. So let's ask her what's her opinion about their new album, which she has heard a couple of times with me. I like it. Oh, nice! A Crippled Black Phoenix, now that's a real fan. This music, similar to Anathema, for instance, uh, is a music that covers that spectrum of emotions that I don't like to be exposed to that often. Therefore, this is not really my everyday go-to music, meaning that every time I listen to this record, I had to play something really melodic and uplifting, uh, like Van Halen or, I don't know, Toto. But honestly, I really like this record. I think that this is a record that you need to listen to more times to appreciate and you need to go deep to find all the differences. So the question is, did this record make me interested in checking out the other records from Crippled Black Phoenix? And the answer is definitely yes. One more thing to say, I really love the artwork, the front cover of the album. It's beautiful and it really reflects the music that's on the disc. And if I went to the store and I would want to buy a record just based on the cover of the album, this record would definitely grab my attention and I would definitely want to have it. Great Escape in Slovak means Veľký útek or Skvelý útek. I hope you liked this review. If you did, don't forget to like. You can follow me on Facebook or on Instagram. You can find links to both in the description of this video below. If you are a fan of Crippled Black Phoenix and you have heard a new album, you can let me know how well does it compare to their previous works. Which records would you recommend me as a potential new fan? And and maybe. It uh. wasn't me. It's going to be in blueprints. <laughs> it's more of a post-rock. I like, I like it. it, hey. I love it. I like it. No, but it's not And uh, don't forget to subscribe. You can check out my own original music, my live video of my own original music that also serves as a sort of like a samples from the album, and my worst to best series. Thanks a lot for watching.